So the trial in the George Floyd matter has started. Derek Chauvin, a murder trial. And the media have not done their job preparing the public for all of this. And there will be surprises in this trial because none of the nuances have been adequately discussed. That George Floyd had a panic attack and begged to be allowed out of the car. That, that maneuver, the knee on the neck, which I find horrendous, was actually in the Minneapolis Police Department training manual. Look, I don't know how this case is gonna go, but I do know the media have been incredibly irresponsible in setting the public up for any of this. Trial is ongoing and we'll see what happens. In the meantime, why would we expect the media to be straight with us when the commander in chief is so bad at telling the truth? Yep, Joe Biden um, burst onto the national scene, I would say in the biggest way back in 1987, when he got caught making dozens and dozens of lies. He's still at it, he's still at it, and he's still being covered for the media. They didn't back then, for the most part, but they have ever since throughout Joe's career. First off, they would not say how spacey and weird he was at that press conference last week. I mean, <laughs> the mainstream media just wouldn't go there. And how about on the substance? The stuff that he said, well, if he wasn't lying, if he wasn't being dishonest, he's just hor horrifically mistaken. It's sick. It's sick, deciding in some states that you cannot bring water to people standing in line, waiting to vote. The Republican voters I know find this despicable. Republican voters. His emotion is so strange and so out of place. I'll get specifically uh, to how, in the law itself, but he, double, he doubles down on this. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. Jim Crow, those horrible laws in the 19th and 20th century that were discriminatory, that hurt and kept people of color down. This is nothing at all like that. But Joe is so pushing this fake narrative. Yes. The new Georgia election law? It's an atrocity. The idea, if you want any indication that it has nothing to do with fairness, nothing to do with decency, they passed the law saying you can't provide water for people standing in line while they're waiting to vote. You don't need anything else to know that this is nothing but punitive designed to keep people from voting. Number one, people online can be provided water. They can. Let's take a look at the law itself. Complicated language that they love to use, but this code section shall not be construed to prohibit a poll officer from distributing materials as required by law or from making available self-service water from an unattended receptacle to an elector waiting in line to vote. All right. Now, earlier it does say that, look, outside groups can't be handing out water. But this is what it doesn't say. I want to go to the National Review. They have a great uh, summary of this. Voters can still bring bottled water or other food or beverages with them to stand online to vote, as people often do when you're waiting online, say, at Disney World or for concert tickets. Voters can still also, if they like, order food. The bill does not stop Domino's Pizza Man or the local hot dog cart or taco truck from doing business. Um, the president's claim that you can't provide water for people about to vote, that is false. What you cannot do under the new Georgia law is deploy people in NRA t-shirts or MAGA hats to hand out free Koch Brothers financed Federalist Society branded pizza to voters, all right? It's actually quite reasonable and plenty of states have similar regulations on the books. Even Delaware, by the way, has arguably more restrictive uh, rules regarding voter ID. And um, the White House, if you want to go to the White House, you need an identification, right? You can't just walk into the White House without ID. They're making all kinds of complaints that the Georgia rules are too onerous when it comes to absentee balloting and ID. And the media are going along with it all. And they're either dishonest, mistaken, but I suspect they know better and they are lying. 
First off, they protected Joe Biden. Um, again, that weird, spacey press conference, not a word of it really in the aftermath, both on the evening news last week and on the Sunday shows yesterday. And the conditions are such right now that this fairly straightforward law that they're lying about, 90 pages, it's a pain in the neck to read, um, but their rhetoric has taken off. So guess what? Everybody's trying to boycott Georgia on the left. So this new law in Georgia could result in boycotts, including Major League Baseball, potentially moving next year's All-Star Game out of Georgia. While a growing number of voting rights advocates are calling for a boycott of Georgia-based companies. Do you believe that a boycott of Georgia is in order now that Brian Kemp has signed this law? I absolutely do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yes, because it's taken hold in the left-leaning media and in the mainstream media. Let's check in with a uh, well-known debate thrower and Biden wannabe running mate Chris Wallace on yesterday's Fox News Sunday. Well, wait a minute, Josh. In fact, it does say that it, it bans providing water or food to people at the polls. Why would that be? I mean, I, I know one of the arguments as well, if people are at the polls, then uh, an advocacy group can go and it's like you're near the election line and you're able to, uh, to, to uh, electioneer them. My gosh, people have been driving people to the polls of both parties for years. It, in a lot of African-American communities, the polls are, uh, the lines are longer because there are not enough polls in those communities. Are you really suggesting that it should be wrong to provide water or drinks to people waiting on line no. to exercise their democratic franchise? No, I'm not. What I'm suggesting is wrong is to suggest that the law well, does Well, that's, that, that's what the law it, says, it, Josh. That's what the law says, Josh. It doesn't. And the law does provide for water for people online. You can order from Domino's. Electioneering is a real thing, as Chris actually mentioned. Um, but why do they give them uh, such license to be so dishonest? John Carl, same thing over there on uh, filling in for Stephanopoulos. But, but to be clear, I mean, the, the law in Georgia, this is, there's no, not, no question for interpretation. It makes it a misdemeanor offense to bring, if you are not a poll worker, to bring people food and water while they are waiting in line. And of course, we've seen very long lines in Georgia. And it's not just Georgia. There are efforts, Republican-led efforts, in 43 states to uh, restrict uh, voting in one way or another. Restrict voting or try to keep the cheating to a minimum. And again, let's take one more look at that law. You can get water. It can come from the polling place. And outside a certain difference, a certain distance, you can order all the food you want. We just don't want outside groups coming up and, uh, yeah, complicating things. I know that. I knew that as a kid. All right. Now, what's kind of affecting all of this? A very dishonest conversation about race. Um, it's all over the place, but... Uh, a lot of folks don't know how to talk about it because they're intimidated. And when they hear language like what you're about to hear, they shrink back and say, maybe, maybe if I am not a person of color, I have no role here. We need to empower and uplift communities of color. The Asian American community is a beautiful community. <laughs> to all the beautiful brown sisters out there with tattoos, with braids, you represent them well. I was with the senator yesterday here in Las Vegas in a room full of beautiful black and brown people in East Las Vegas. You have Kamala Harris, this bold, brilliant, beautiful black woman, HBCU graduate. I wanted to uplift, encourage, and celebrate all of the beautiful black queens and kings that continue to inspire me and inspire the whole world. You know, I guess that's all great, actually. The problem I have right now is that people who are not of color, when they come up in the public conversation, the language is um, diminishing, if not downright disrespectful. You see those men, there's no color in them. There's just pure white males trying to, to basically hold on to power with their life. White privilege is how it happened. White privilege. We know why it happened, right? Because these are white people. We must not be cowed by the terror unleashed by white men drowning in the deep end of racism, xenophobia, and misogyny. White women have taken an active role in the maintenance of white supremacy. White people actively participate in upholding systems of white supremacy. 
See what I mean? And this kind of uh, language and rhetoric, I thought they might be a bit more enlightened after what happened to Nicholas Sandman uh, a couple of years ago. Remember that? In front of the Lincoln Memorial. This kid, they try to cancel him because he stood and smiled with a MAGA hat on as that guy uh, was trying to cause all kinds of trouble. <sighs> the racial conversation that's happening in America is a silly one to avoid a more serious one. Have you noticed, when it comes to crime at least, it all depends on the color of the victim and the color of the perpetrator to figure out whether or not the media are gonna give a damn. I'd like to talk for a moment about Mohammed Anwar. Have you heard about this story? A man originally from Pakistan who was driving for Uber Eats in Washington, D.C. His Honda Accord that he owned was carjacked by two teenage females, one 13, one 15. Absolutely horrible what happened. Here's, a, here's that moment. They stole the car. They stole the car. These girls. Who else? Who else? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Everybody step back from the car. I'm going to need everybody to step back from the car. They stepped back from the car. Everybody, I need you to step back from the seat. So this happened almost a week ago, and there's been very little talk about it on the national scene. When I first heard about it, I thought it was two career criminals and... But then I found out it was a 13-year-old girl and a 15-year-old girl, and the victim, a native of Pakistan. And then I became a bit more interested in also why aren't we talking more about this? What was happening in the lives of those girls where they would do something like this and have such depraved indifference to this man's life? This is a big issue. This is, a, if nothing else, a big news story. Yet the mayor of Washington, D.C., Mayor Bowser, can go on national television and this isn't even brought up. It's not even mentioned. Would that be considered rude somehow? I pay taxes, you pay taxes, but we don't have any representation. Mayor Bowser, is there anything we can do about that? Can we withhold our taxes? Uh, well, that's certainly a tactic um, that people have suggested. <laughs> that was yesterday. Uh, I want to know more about what happened to um, Mr. Anwar. I want to know more about those two girls in that car. I want to know more. But instead, we'll just have a kind of a Democrat seminar and avoid an uncomfortable conversation about race so we can have a silly one. And that brings me back to Donald Trump. It's time for some Trump truth. You are fake news. Look, I thought he was great. I know lots of people had problems with him, but I liked him on substance and I liked him on style. And one thing I um, appreciated, he wasn't afraid of appearing politically incorrect. The appearance of being politically incorrect, that can inhibit people from speaking the truth or at least having a forthright conversation, people learning from each other. The fear of political incorrectness is uh, such a waste of time. And I don't think we're ever going to have somebody who speaks so bluntly in the White House unless he comes back in 2024 the way he said some basic truths like he did in, the, uh, in one of the fall debates. Why did you decide to do that, to end racial sensitivity training? And do you believe that there is systemic racism in this country, sir? I ended it because it's racist. I ended it because a lot of people were complaining that they were asked to do things that were absolutely insane, that it was a radical uh, revolution that was taking place in our military, uh, in our schools, all over the place. And you know it, and so does what, everybody what, what else. Radical, and he would know. What is oh, radical totally about racist. racial sensitivity training? Sir. If you were a certain person, you had no status in life. It was sort of a reversal. And if you look at the people, we were paying people hundreds of thousands of dollars to teach very bad ideas and, frankly, very sick ideas. And, and really, they were teaching people to hate our country. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow that to happen. Unfortunately, he's no longer president. Um, so we've got to pick up the fight. People of all races, 
who are not racist, who don't want to be judged based on color. We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to now take the lead. It's up to all of us to stop this insanity. I really believe that. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.